Hey everyone, this is Friedel Hacker, Asia Raven. I'm here with my recap and review of Snowpiercer season number three, episode number two, which is titled The Last to Go. And I really like the fact that the writers didn't drag out uh, the Snowpiercers coming back to reattach with Big Alice. By the end of this episode, the Snowpiercer was back. And yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing what's going to happen next because you know, you know that Wilford is not going to go down without a fight. So the episode actually opens up with Ruth and she is uh, thinking of what happens to the human body when it starts to get cold, where all of the heat from the limbs is redirected to the heart. And then people start to see things. And as she's uh, waiting for more art orders and everything to cool down a bit so that she can get, go back to f helping the resistance. She notices that Javi and a few other uh, people are working in, in one of the carriages in first class. So she decides to follow them. And it turns out that Mr. Wilford has a plan because Mr. Wilford, yeah, Joseph always has a plan. And this time he had, he ended up uh, having his engineers make, a, make this EMP bomb. And yeah, Ruth doesn't understand what this thing is, but yeah, she knows that it's something bad. So she decides to send a message to Pike by using a mouse. And she, yeah, it was, I was like, okay, I'm using mouse uh, in order to send messages. It makes sense. So she ends up sending a message to Pike and she's like, you know what? I don't know what's happening, but Joseph is up to something. So while that's happening, Joseph is very happy because today is the day that they end up testing something, which is basically the thing that Ruth found. And he's taking a bath and Dr. Headwood is there and yeah, her partner is dead, uh, but she still is carrying around his shoes. But yeah, he's taking a bath and he just uh, stands up all naked and she leaves. And Kevin is excited too because, uh, yeah, Kevin is always excited when it comes to whatever uh, Joseph wants him to do. So over uh, at uh, Snowpiercer, we see that Josie is taking care of the woman that Leighton found in the previous episode. And yeah, Leighton, Leighton having a vision of the dragon blood tree, it's still a thing in this episode, which we'll get to in a bit. So Josie is like, you know what, this woman is dehydrated and she's uh, malnourished and she possibly has uh, radiation poisoning. So yeah, she she is not she's not good. So as Josie is walking away, Leighton is like, hey Josie, hey Josie, I think we need to talk about something. And Josie is like, what do you want us to talk about? Well, the kiss that we had. And Josie is like, you know what? We don't necessarily have to talk about it because Leighton is talking about how he has a baby with, uh, with Zara and then he promised Zara to be with her, to raise the baby and all of that stuff. And Josie is like, hey Leighton, it's all good. We don't have to talk about it. And I'm like, okay, okay, Josie, if you say so. So they go and meet with Ben and yeah, Ben ended up going over the data and he ended up running the tests on the latest uh, sample that he procured in the previous episode. It turns out that yes, the earth is warming down, but yeah, the rate is very, very slow. And it's possibly going to take uh, to uh, around like what near uh, yeah it's going to take up to a century for for the climate to be warm enough for humanity to go outside and they only have uh, one more spot left at the horn of africa and i guess yeah this is where the dragon blood tree uh, grows but Leighton doesn't know that yet but he's like you know what this is the last spot we need to go there we need to check and we need to get the sample from here uh, and but yeah his crew members are like you know what we don't have enough rest to make such a long trip and we also have an extra mouth to feed right now so we need to go back and we need to connect with Snowpiercer and this is where everyone is trying to think of uh, how they're going to achieve that because he did they're like you know what Joseph is on the train and he won't like uh, like the fact that we're going to come back and also we don't necessarily have a lot of data and we also don't have Melanie with us so that's going to be a trouble when it comes to the morale of the people but yeah they're running out of options they need to do it so Leighton ends up going to go, uh, goes, yeah, Leighton goes and talks to the woman and it turns out that the woman's name is Asha and she ended up living at the nuclear reactor for like, what, eight years? And it was bad. It was bad. The living conditions weren't good. And Asha can't believe the fact that she's on Snowpiercer right now. She's like, where's Mr. Wilford, the brilliant engineer? And this is where Leighton is like, well, things have changed, but you're okay. You're going to live there. And I'm going to take you uh, to show you around. And he takes her through the library where Asha notices Audrey. And Audrey is like, who the heck is that? And Beth is like, you know what? You don't have the privilege to ask questions anymore. And yeah, so Asha has been welcomed onto Snowpiercer and she can't believe it. But I, I'm just happy that Asha is alive and she seems like a good woman. But let's see what happens uh, moving forward. So it's time for Joseph to conduct a test and he's, he's watching everything through the dome. And yeah, because it's because the EMP bomb is uh, 
is uh, in in the last carriage uh, the rest of the carriages uh, of first class uh, will be in um, will be enough of a buffer in order to test the emp bomb at two at 10 percent power and yeah the test occurs and it actually works it actually works and of course uh, joseph is very happy about it and pike ended up going to go, uh, meet up with root and they have been thinking about what joseph is up to and yeah the emt bomb the emp bomb uh, activates and yeah there's electrical surge going through the carriages pike and root feel it too and root is like yep that's the weapon that joseph is working on and and yeah the weapon is actually in the last carriage where the snow where the snow piercer has to reattach with big alice so we need to get rid of it uh, for Leighton to come back and while that's happening we get to see osweiler proposing to lj and he's like lj will you marry me and lj is very excited about marrying osweiler because she's like you know what i really thought that no one going was going was ever going to love me after my family died but you do love me oz don't you and I'm like, really, Oz? Really? You want to marry LJ? Uh, are we forgetting that she ended up uh, killing, having uh, people killed back in season number one just for the fun of it? But yeah, they're getting married and LJ is like, you know what? We have to tell Wilfred. And Oswald is like, why? She's like, well, he, uh, he because uh, he trusts us and he supports us. So we need to go and talk to him. And they do. They go and talk to Joseph. And Joseph is very excited about the marriage because, again, Joseph is always planning something. And he's like, you know what? I'm going to use this moment in order to uh, in order to gain support of the people and i'm going to show them that i'm always with them if they are loyal to me and those who are loyal to me will be rewarded and because lg and osweiler are loyal to wilfred he ends up uh, planning to throw them a loyal wedding <laughs> And yeah, he is like, congratulations, Mrs. Mrs. Osweiler. And LJ is very quick to say, uh, Folger Osweiler. And he's like, yep, yep, rolls, rolls right down the tongue. And yeah, of course, uh, the fact that Wilfred basically took over the preparations for the wedding and the wedding is actually going to be tomorrow, Oz, Oz doesn't like that. And, we, and we'll get to that in a bit. So Pike asks Zara that he needs to talk to Harvey because Root saw something that Wilfred is working on a weapon. And Zara is like, you know what, Harvey isn't, hasn't been the same after the dog attack and I don't think he's going to talk to anyone. And Pike is like, you know what, figure out a way to get, uh, to get Harvey to talk to Root. So while that's happening, we go back to uh, Snowpiercer. And Alex is just uh, not having, uh, she's having a bad day because she's unhappy that the satellites have started to degrade and they aren't and, and they aren't getting the satellite imagery that they used to get. And this is where Ben and Alex talk about how, how Melanie would have been proud of Alex uh, considering how she handled the train in the previous episode. And Alex is like, you know what, Ben, I appreciate what you're doing, but we have to accept the fact that Melanie is gone. And, uh, and Ben is like, well, Asha is still alive. So maybe Melanie is still alive too. And Alex is like, like, no, no, she's gone. And I'm like, I don't think that she's gone. <laughs> so uh, Leighton, because of his vision, he's look he's going through some, uh, some books about trees. And Audrey is like, what are you looking for, Leighton? You need to tell me. And yeah, Leighton just keeps quiet. And he's just trying to find books uh, that have pictures of the tree that he saw in his vision. And he figures out that the tree that he had the vision of is actually a dragon blood tree. So Josie ends up taking Asha to her new room and Asha is having trouble interacting with Josie because she's like, you know what, if it has been years since I talked to someone and Josie is like, hey, don't worry about it. It will all come back to you. And Josie leaves Asha in the room and Asha ends up smelling the soil in one of the pots. And yeah, it's going to take her time to to actually recal uh, recalibrate and accept that uh, her living situations have uh, changed. So Leighton is going through his books in his room and, and Bess comes in and Bess is like, hey, Leighton, what are you up to? And this is where Leighton ends up telling Bet, uh, Bess about uh, his vision and uh, how he saw the dragon blood tree and how that dragon blood tree is uh, native to the area that you're going in near the Horn of Africa. And Bess is like, wait, 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 you're telling me that you are having visions now? And Leighton is like, hey, it is what it is. Because when the person is uh, so close to dying because of cold, they do get visions. And this is the vision that I got. It has to be some kind of sign, right? And Bess is like, yeah, yeah, sure, buddy. But as far as Bess is concerned, Leighton probably ended up learning about this particular tree in high school and that memory popped up when he was close to dying. And I'm like, you know what? I agree with Bess, but let's see where this vision thing uh, goes from here. So uh, the, the preparations for the wedding are happening and Kevin is helping uh, Will, uh, Joseph with the weddings. And yeah, Joseph is like, is this a, a bit too much red? And Kevin is like, hey, we can never have enough red. <laughs> 
<laughs> so basically, Wilfred is going on uh, the charm offensive in order to not only help LJ and Osweiler with their wedding, but also try and boost support for himself in the community. So we cut to Osweiler and LJ, and yeah, they are having some relationship issues because, again, Osweiler doesn't like the fact that Wilfred basically took over his wedding preparations and all of that stuff. And Osweiler is like, you know what, and we and I can't call off the wedding right now because Wilfred will kill me. And he's like, you know what, LJ, you're always conniving. And LJ is like, well, it's good to connive, right? And yeah, he just walks away. He's like, you know what, you're always conniving, and yeah, continue conniving. I don't want anything to do with this. And I'm like, oh, Osweiler, really, really? I don't think you want uh, LJ to be on your bad side because, yeah, you you don't want to get on LJ's bad side because she she could have you killed. <laughs> so Zara decides to go and talk to Harvey, and she's like, you know what, Harvey, you can talk to me. Wilfred isn't here, and Harvey's like, no, 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 I can't talk to you. And then Zara actually lies to Harvey about how Joseph uh, how Joseph wants him to go uh, into the carriage in order to take care of something, and Harvey and Harvey leaves. So LJ is crying over what hap uh, what Osweiler uh, uh, told uh, told her, and yeah, the teacher, the school teacher, is basically trying to help uh, LJ get ready. And Joseph comes in, and the school teacher excuses her excuses herself. And this is where we get a very very interesting scene where LJ talks to Joseph, and Joseph is like, you know what, LJ, I understand what kind of wo young woman that you are. You understand that sometimes some some people have to get hurt in order for us to get what we want, and LJ is like, yeah, and it looks like that Oz doesn't understand that. And Wilfred is like, you know, uh, LJ, do you understand why all of this is important to me? Why I'm doing this? And LJ is like, yeah, Mr. Wilfred, I can see why are you why you're doing all of this because you need to boost loyalty, and nothing is more important than, lo than loyalty. And yeah, as far as LJ is concerned, her loyal vote will always be towards Joseph, and Joseph is happy about it. Joseph's like, you know, but save the crocodile deals, the earth for the ceremony. I need you to act it all up for my sake. And LJ is like, yeah, yeah, Joseph, I've got you. And after having a conversation with LJ, he goes and decides to have a conversation with Osweiler too. And he's like, Osweiler, I understand what kind of person that you are. You were very ambitious because I went through Roche's records on on you. But you also are into playing the piano, which is a good thing. You are uh, you consider yourself uh, a bit of an artist, and I appreciate that. And as these two are talking, this is where um, Joseph ends up taking Osweiler's hands in his, and then he ends up. Uh, <sighs> then he, <laughs> uh, Joseph ends up uh, grabbing Osweiler by the crotch and then he ends up crushing him down there and he's like Oz do do the same thing to me do the same, th same thing to me the same move that you used to do when you were a brakeman and Oz ends up uh, crushing uh Joseph is crotch as well and both of them are crushing each other and yeah Joseph is like harder harder I need you to do this harder and yeah they end up crushing each other harder it was weird it was so weird because again Joseph uses his uh, psychosexual powers in order to get what he wants and I think that uh, this entire scene was another example of that yeah it was it was a very weird move but also there was the sexual tension between these two as far as I could tell and yeah, as they are crushing each other, this is where Joseph is like, okay, now, so what are your hands meant? What are your hands meant for now? And uh, yeah, Oz is like for crushing uh, people down there. And then uh, Joseph uh, lets him go, and he's like, "Yep, your hands are uh, are for that. Your hands are for caressing uh, your wife. And then after you're done with all of that, then you can go and play the piano." So basically, I guess Wilfred just wanted uh, Osweiler to realize that he needs to get his priorities right. That as long as he's able to do what he wants, uh, what Wilfred wants him to do, he can go ahead and play the piano and live the life that he that he wants. And basically, he wants uh, Osweiler to go ahead with with the wedding so kevin uh so yeah hobby Harvey goes to uh, goes to the first class carriages and Ruth is waiting for him there and Ruth is like Harvey you need to tell me what uh, Joseph is planning you need to tell me what that weapon is what is it is it an EMP bomb of some kind and Harvey doesn't necessarily say anything he needs like you know what I can't help you and he walks away so it's time for the wedding everyone is there uh, all of them are dressed up and yeah these two basically uh, Wilfred basically gives them a speech and makes them go through the four steps of humanity which is basically like grass to ice ice to steal and then steal to the light which was basically Wilford light uh, Wilford's light everyone is happy 
everyone is getting free drinks and while that's happening pike decides to go and make contact with lights because she, he needs her to look at the emp bomb and lights is like yeah yeah i'll go with you and while that's happening javi goes through uh walks through the market as well and this is where kevin notices uh, notices him but yeah before that happens we uh, we need to talk about lights and pike and yeah lights is like wait 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 you want me to disarm an emp bomb and Pi uh, pike is like well don't you have an idea what you need to do with it and yeah light is like i can i can try i guess i can try to mess mess it up if we can't disarm it so yeah as javi is walking through the market kevin notices him and kevin is like what the heck are you doing here and uh, javi's like well i was just going back for to gather some final calculations and i'm going back to uh back to the control panel and kevin is like mm-hmm mm-hmm so i guess javi lying to kevin i think that he still has some side uh, some kind of sense in him and he isn't hundred a hundred percent loyal to wilfred which i guess is a good thing so kevin is like you know what because Kevin is smart and Kevin is like, you know what? The wedding is possible. It's quite possibly a very good distraction for us. And it, it, uh, it ended up giving time to the resistance, I guess. So I need to go and check the, uh, check, uh, check the bomb, the EMP bomb. And so he ends up going to, uh, uh, I, uh, did he get, goes to, no, he goes to Wilfred later. Yeah. So while that's happening, uh, Root, uh, Root and uh, Pike and Lice are trying to figure out what to do with the bomb. And then they hear Kevin moving towards them. And Pike is like, we need to run. We need to run now. And Root is like, no, if we don't stop this right now, Leighton won't be able, uh, Wilford will be able to perfect the bomb and he will use it when Leighton comes near. So we need to stop this right now. And Root decides to act as a diversion. And she goes to Kevin and yeah, she literally distracts Kevin quite well, in my opinion. And, and Root is like, well, I was the one who was leading, leading the resistance, helping them. And Kevin, you can take me to Wilfred and you can uh, capture me right now without lifting a finger. So of course, Kevin likes that. And Kevin is like, yep, take her, take her to Mr. Wilfred. So while that's happening, uh, Leighton and uh, Asha end up having a conversation and we learn and we learned that Asha was uh, holed up in that nuclear plant with her family and other scientists and then marauders came in and the marauders ended up killing a whole lot of them and then everyone started dying off because of radiation poisoning. She also ended up losing her nephew who was basically like 15 years old. He had thyroid cancer. And yeah, Leighton is like, you know what? Hate to tell you this, but humanity hasn't evolved ever since sense uh so there are still bad people out there and asha is like why did you why did you rescue me like that why did you do it and Leighton is like you know what i don't know but i'm glad that you're alive so it's time for everyone uh, so it's time for them to go and reattach it themselves with uh, big alice and now they have two options either they can get back on the main line and then figure out whether or not big alice is in front of them or behind them or they can try and parallel Big Alice uh, by moving on to a parallel uh, track. And Leighton is like, you know what? Let's go with the second option. And Bess is like, uh, did you see? Uh, did you see us using that option in a vision which, with another in another vision? And Leighton is like, no, 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 no. That's not it, Bess. Uh, it's just it's just something that I think will work better. So as Light is trying to mess uh, mess the EMP bomb, it turns out that she ended up activating it, and it ends up activating uh, in full power. So yeah, Pike's Pike, uh, strong guy, and Sykes they need to figure out what the heck they need to do with the EMP bomb. And they do figure out figure it out. They're like, you know what? We can just throw it off the train. <laughs> So Joseph goes and he ends up talking to Root and he's kind of impressed that Root was able to pull this off while working with the resistance and Root is like, well, I always try not to disappoint, sir. And Wilfred is, uh, Joseph is like, if only you were loyal, Root. And Root is like, well, I am loyal. I am loyal to something that's far bigger than you, Mr. Wilfred. And then this is where these two talk about how uh, Wilfred ended up creating this sports, uh, those sports to be an idle threat. He never meant to use them in order to take away other people's arm. And he's like, but you, Root, you ended up using that port, uh, using those sports as punishment 13 times. And Root is like, you know what? You know what? I'm ready to repent. I'm ready to make up for my mistakes. So if you want to take my arm, take it. So yeah, Pike and Strong Guy and, uh, and Lights are able to work together in order to throw the EMP bomb away. And because it's it's uh, it's about to blow up at full charge, it does blow up. And yeah, that uh, EMP field is able to reach uh, Snowpiercer, and that allows them to pinpoint the location of the search. And they ended up and they end up figuring out where uh, Big Alice is on the track. And Ben is just happy because he's like, you know what? We know where Big Alice is, but Big Alice doesn't necessarily know where we are. So we have the element of surprise and we all know that that joseph hates surprises 
So it's time for Root to get her arm uh, frozen off. And Root is like, you know what? Just do it. Just do it already. And Joseph made it a point in the, to break, uh, to freeze her arm quite, uh, quite high up to a point where no prosthetic can be used. And Root is ready for it. And I think in a sense, uh, because Root ended up uh, punishing people the same way, I think that she thinks that she deserves this punishment as well. And she's ready for it. However, before her arm can be frozen off, uh, yeah, Snowpiercer decides to make an appearance uh, on a parallel track. And Wilfred is like, yep, yep, Snowpiercer is back. Snowpiercer is back. Uh, back. Everyone get to arms, uh, pick up arms. We are going to battle. And yeah, this is where the episode ends. And again, I really like the fact that the writers didn't drag it out. Leighton and the crew decided to go back to Big Alice in this episode. And by the end of this episode, we found out them basically that it's time for them to reattach. They didn't drag the reattachment thing for like another one or two episodes, which I, I appreciate it. And with uh, Snowpiercer possibly reattaching, reattaching with Big Alice, I'm looking forward to seeing uh, everyone making their way to the Horn of Africa and all of that stuff. But yeah, I, uh, I'll be doing a written review of this for the Geek Theory. The link to my written review will be down in the comment section below as soon as the review is published on the website. Let me know what you thought of the episode. And until next time, stay happy, stay safe, stay blessed. See you guys later. Bye.